Hey everybody, welcome to episode 13 of Restoration Z where we're restoring this 2007-2008 DRZ 400SM. I sometimes get those confused because it was built 07, registered 08. Anyway, we've seen in the recent episodes I've just repainted it. Since then, as I mentioned, I said I was going to polish the paint and as you can see, it has come up absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. For a rattle can job, this is pretty good. Um, so what have we got to do today? Well, number one thing is I've got to flush out the oil tank in the bike. Um, when I sandblasted this, I think some sand got around the corner of this cover, which was a lot tighter than that before I've taken the washers out. Um, although the paint didn't get around it, so maybe the air lifted it enough to let the sand get in that way. Anyway, some of the blasting medium uh, got inside the oil tank and obviously we don't want that getting in the engine. There is a screen down here like a little um, metal mesh screen that's fully encapsulated uh, that should catch most of it and then obviously it's going to go through the pump and then through the oil filter on the engine but I just want to make sure it's all out because obviously sandblasting medium is an abrasive and that's the exact thing you don't want in your engine. So what I've done already is I blasted it out with brake cleaner and then I ran um, some new old oil through it, as in it's new but it's too old to really use in a running engine, uh, through it and repeatedly filtered that using some kitchen roll just as a starting point. Now what I'm going to do is, and I've left it inside, I've got some paraffin, I'm going to fill the tank as much as I can with paraffin and I'm going to let that sit for a few hours because I've got to go and pick up some tools this afternoon for a mate to rebuild the forks because I have the parts for that. Thank you Wemoto, coming through again, uh, helping with this build, um, Wemoto.com, amazing people, thank you, they've got me the fork seals and everything I need to get the forks done but so I've got to go and grab the tools so I can leave the kerosene to sit. Then we'll drain that out by actually draining this um, through the, with the filter still in. Then I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna attach a hose up here and I'm gonna keep flushing through paraffin and then filter it using coffee filters to get any of the bits out. And just basically like parts washing the inside. Okay, so I've drained the oil out, put a bolt in there and then zip tied that up. There's all sorts of different things you can use for this. There's specialized products which are like, you know, oil tank flushes you can use. Um, some engine flushes, I think. You can also use diesel, petrol. Tons of brake cleaner, uh, you could probably even, I don't know, I'm not going to make too many more suggestions. <laughs> but paraffin has been like, paraffin kerosene, seems to be the same thing, um, has been the suggestion. I use it for degreasing. Um, my only concern is what's left over afterwards, but I'm going to rinse it all out with brake cleaner anyway and blow it through the nail line, let it dry, so it should all be fine. But anyway, this needs to go in and soak for, uh, for a couple of hours at least, until I get back from getting the tools anyway. I've just popped the spaces back in to get that cover tight again. I've filled up the frame, I think it's up here nearly, it's like right at the top with kerosene. Uh, so now I can take the funnel out, and then if I put my finger over the breather, I should be able to. So I've given it a good shake up so we know it's all coating everything in there, and hopefully that'll be loosening all the gunk that's sat on the walls inside that's holding onto any of the sand, and that should all fall down naturally to the bottom, and then when I take this out, uh, and flush it, it all should come out, in theory. We need to leave that for a bit, so let's do something else. I'm going to filter that kerosene, as I say, using coffee filters, but I went to my local hardware store to find some, and look what this company called them. Aroma Brown. It doesn't make me think of coffee, if I'm honest. So here's a bit of a before, and I'll show you an after in a minute. I'm sure you don't watch too much of me just scrubbing this with wire wool. I'm going to put on some tunes, do this for a, a bit and then uh, go and get those tools. As I mentioned in a previous episode, I literally have a giant bin bag full of old sheets and pillowcases and stuff. So I am like so sorted for rags, it's nice to be able to use clean stuff every time. But because I'm not using them too much, I'm actually going to wash them and re- OW! Reuse them! And for anything particularly stubborn, I'll be using the nylon brushes on the Dremel. I'm going to use the 4300. I would have actually probably preferred to do, use my light um, for this because obviously it's so much easier to get in there, but I've actually forgot to charge this. So, oops. Many hours have passed, uh, many things have happened, but uh, this is now clean. I mean, it's not perfect, actually. It prob hmm. Yeah, I could probably go back over this in a couple of places. I did have to dash off earlier on. 
uh, but it's getting there. As you can see, it's, it's not too bad. And I've also borrowed the tools off my mate Biker Dave. Um, I'm going to put a link to his channel in the description. He does racing, uh, and I think you should go and check him out. The tools I need to borrow from Dave uh, was this slide hammer, uh, which is it's basically a fork seal driver. It's a slide hammer and a, a driver to knock your seals into your forks. Um, he's lent me this spring compression tool, but I don't think I need this. Uh, this is more a sports bike thing. I think on these forks, I reduce the pressure from the other end, which I'll show you when I do them. And also this, which is... Uh, it is an actual tool, but what I've used in the past is a syringe and a piece of hose. But this is basically to help you get the right level of your uh, oil, for your, your fluid in your forks. You put this on the top and it helps you get the right measurement. So big thanks to Dave for that. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't have a spanner big enough. And I was just like having a bit of a panic going, oh Christ, and there's no way I'm going to get these fork caps off. Because it's, it's a 50 millimeter cap now. Um... <laughs> I do happen to have, because my brother's actually left it here because it's not my tool, this this uh, this 60mm spanner, or maybe it is a 50 I don't know, all I do know is this does fit. Uh, and what I just did, just as a test, was I put this back on the yoke so I had a way of clamping the uh, fork, got it up against the side and was very careful, oh, can I show you this, very careful to try and undo it, and thankfully... They're not that tight. Right, it's now eight o'clock at night. Um, I'm not gonna get anything meaningful done. So what I think I'll do, which will be good anyway, is I'm gonna leave the kerosene, which is in the oil tank, uh, in there. I've given it a little shake every now and then. And then I'll get on with the draining process. Right, well, I'm gonna go and spend some time with Reno and do some more editing tonight. And then tomorrow morning, we'll be back at it and we can look at what we're gonna do. Hey everybody, so this has been in here overnight. Let's cut that zip tie, just stopped it from leaking. Uh, this is kerosene of course, and now what I need to do is basically filter what's in here and then tank the screen out and start flushing. Whoa! Okay, that's going a lot faster than I was anticipating. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. Okay, so this is the internal screen and it is quite gritty so hopefully everything's loosened up and we can start flushing out okay i've come up with a slightly different plan um i don't think i'm going to get enough fluid through that breather hole to be able to flush stuff around um so i am going to dump it in the top but then i'm going to just collect it straight into the bucket underneath and then filter that back into the bottle because the filter rate of the filters is so slow that it can't keep up what's going to come out the frame this will only be used for this job and degreasing, so it's not going to be a problem. Anyway, I'm having to kind of do this cat handily. And ideally what we want to see is a load of crud in the bottom of this box. Can you see all that white dust? That is the abrasive I used. Uh, it's a white abrasive and that's exactly what I was expecting to find. Awesome! So let's... Uh, filter that and flush some more of course the other thing is the stuff i'm washing out is heavy so it's going to go to the bottom every time so if i don't completely empty the small one with the bits in it it should actually never cross over but as you can see this takes a while to filter as you can see this is now a highly sophisticated setup of a chair um and a funnel and a piece of hosing i realized i needed to flush through the breather system as well so I've basically flushed this through continuously with paraffin, flushed through there, I've blown it through with an airline, and I've done this multiple times. This is the last lot that's going to go in. Right, now I'm going to spray a load of brake cleaner in here and try and wash the walls. Hopefully the paraffin's taken the oil out, this will help take the paraffin and any remaining oil out and then it will dry in there and then when it dries with as i blow the airline through any loose bits of sand are going to naturally get you know whipped off the walls and flown out the bottom in theory the thing is i've noticed there's like a tube which goes down through the tank so you can't quite get directly in there which is why i'm going to spray from both ends and through the breather and also not to forget to flush out the oil line channel Oh, oh, that's the inside of the tank. That's awesome. I thought there might be a channel, but it's actually a direct port. 
I've only got a new can of brake cleaner for uh, any other jobs and doing the carbs, so the little bit that's left in here I'm just going to keep using. I'm mostly going to spray it through, let it sit for a minute, let it dry off a bit, and then spray it again and just keep doing that till I run out. Uh, then blow it out with the airline. Okay, so it was brake cleaner, oil, that we filtered a few times, then it was paraffin, flushed with paraffin, uh, flushed with brake cleaner, blew with an airline repeatedly, and now, when I stick my finger in here, it's very dry. There's, I mean, there's a bit of dirt, is in sort of darkness, but my finger's dirty anyway. But there is no feeling of sand or anything oily or greasy or anything in there, so it's clean. Perfect. So now we can reinstall this with this little mesh filter. Pop a crush washer on there. Just thinking about it, this is very dry because obviously I've got all the oil out of it. I think I'm going to use, you know, once something's anti-seize and can take reasonably good temperatures, a tiny, tiny smear of copper grease just to have something in there in between. And we're thanks to Wemoto, we have some. The arguments on the internet this stuff has caused is amazing. What's nice about this is when I screw this in, there's no grit in there. It doesn't feel gritty in the slightest. Anything with a crush washer doesn't need to be done up really tight. It just needs to be done up enough to get the crush washer to deform, because once it does that, it's not going to move. So now this is all clean, bare metal inside and dry, no oil, so I don't want it to rust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the oil that I used to flush it earlier, but this has been filtered twice and um, anything that's heavy is going to sit at the bottom and I'm not going to pull the last drops out. So if I filter it in again, this is three filters, this oil is going to be absolutely fine. I'm then going to drain it out before I even connect the engine and put the proper oil in. And I might, if I've got enough, I might just flush like, you know, half cut through to wash through some of this. And even then, the new oil, if there's anything left in there, has got a screen and then an oil filter to catch it. I think I've done enough to be sure that I'm not going to get any of this in my engine. <laughs> but you have to go to that level. And to be fair, I'm actually not putting that much oil in it because all I want is oil enough to, that I can move the frame around and get it to coat all the walls in there, um, opposed to actually filling it up. And I've got a glove finger and a zip tie for the uh, breather. There is a gap up here, so this is going to run in fine. And I'm just going to leave that oil to drain in there. And that's the frame. Done. As long as I don't make myself feel like I need to get this done tomorrow, this is much more enjoyable. The second you start thinking I need to be quicker, I need to get videos out faster and all that sort of stuff, it starts making it no fun. So thanks to my patrons for supporting this channel and taking away that pressure of feeling like I need to make sure I have a video every couple of days because sometimes you just can't do that. Sometimes something comes up like this and it's like, well, what am I gonna do? Do a terrible job and give you a video early or make you wait an extra few days for an episode and have a damn good result? I know what I would rather do. So I need to knock out a few of the jobs that are stopping me getting the bike back together. And one of those is replacing this bearing here. Now, Wemoto, thank you very much Wemoto for the help with this. Uh, check out the links in the description. They've given me the entire kit to replace all these bearings. Problem is I don't actually have the tools to do all of them, um, but I can do it with a vice. So I know I need to replace this one, and there is a story with this one, which I'm not sure if I've told you, but yeah, I'm gonna do this with sockets and a vice. This is not the best way to do it. You can buy a special toolkit to do it, but many people do do it this way. Hopefully this won't be a problem. And so I'm a bit in two minds right now as to whether to replace all the bearings, because these ones are absolutely fine. Like there is nothing wrong with them. And it's like, well, why not just keep those until those go? Uh, I don't know, but this one's got to be changed because of what happened. Uh, inside these bearings, there's a little sleeve, and there's a load of needles. Now, when I was cleaning the grease out of this to, in, to imagine putting new grease in it, because I wasn't going to replace them because it was fine, I was doing this outside next to the garage with an airline, and the other ones which have got captured needle bearings, this one doesn't, it would seem. And when I blew it, they all flew out. Now, I managed to find, by using... <laughs> like a piece of plastic and sifting through this. Halfway through sifting, I realized it was also where my cat chooses to crap regularly. So I dug through dirt and cat crap to get all those pins back and then didn't even need to. This is the All Balls Racing Kit. You get all of what you need to replace all of these. So you've got all the seals, all the bearings, all of the little um, sleeves, everything you need to replace all of them. But I just need to replace, to start with anyway, that one. 
I assume that's right. We should have two, four. Why do we have six? Two, four, five. But we have two, four, six. That's the replacement central shaft. So they're the bits I need. These are the other ones. You obviously just get extras, I guess. Uh, right. So just to reiterate, what I'm about to do using a vice is not the best way of doing this. You can buy a toolkit that will help you do this. I don't have one. Um, there isn't a budget to get one, so I'm going to do it the old school way using the vice. So basically I need a socket that is bigger than that bearing on one side and one that's the same size on that side. But first thing I need to do is get the old dust seals out. Basically just going to ram a screwdriver in there and they'll just pop out. Right, so I've got a socket which matches the outer size of the actual uh, bearing. And then I've got one that fits over here and the bearing should fall inside that. So now what we need to do... Right, now, in theory... Yeah, there's very little pr pressure involved on that. So there's the old bearing, and you can see the needles. And there's, I think there's something like 34 in here, and I found like 30 of them. Digging through cat poo. Digging through cat poo. Now I've cleaned up the pocket. I've been trying to work out what grease I should use to put these in, because you need to use a little bit of grease to help it along. And the best thing with the grease to use on seals is red rubber grease. That's what I'm going to go with. Uh, if you wish to correct me and invent a time machine and go back two weeks, then I can do it a different way. Honestly, this is not the way you do this, so please do this the proper way. You have the time and the budget to get the right tools or borrow them. Flat plates to start it. It should start straight. Down a bit. Just using some verniers to compare the depth, we do need to come in about another millimetre, and that's it. And we are bang on. Absolutely bang on. Clean up the excess grease. The washers go back on top. And as you can see, that gets all pinned together, and that is one replaced bearing, and that feels like the other ones do. So now I'm left with a quandary of this. I have the bearings here, and I have bearings here. These bearings are good, these bearings are good. My method of putting these bearings in isn't. And I don't want to mess up a new set of bearings, and I'm thinking about keeping these ones in, buying the proper tool, and then changing those in the future. So what I can do with these now, because the seals are fine, I've got some of the old grease out, I'm now going to put some in, my hands are the cleanest thing right now. Putting the grease in and then pressing it into the bearing. If I put any ex excess in here, there is a huge gap in the middle it'll move to, so I'm not really worried about that. Then slot it back in. Back sail. Take away some of my excess grease. Squidge the washers into it. I promise you, I'm holding the shaft. They're absolutely perfect. I know people are going to freak out. It's like, but they're there, man. But they're there. It's like, yeah, but I don't have the tool to do it properly. As you've seen, doing that one was tricky. There are double bearings in here, and I will most likely mess them up, which means I won't have any decent ones in here, and I will break these. Better to get the kit. We can reuse our zip tie. Oh, damn it, I forgot to grab the seals. Right, well, while I go and grab those, See if you can work out something that's not quite right here. So yeah, have you noticed it? Unless I'm sorely mistaken, and I don't think I am. Those seals are in backwards. I didn't put them in. Um, these are the seals that are in the bike when I bought the bike. Just going round, gently prying until it pops out. Again, this is another one where you would normally replace the bearings. 
I don't have a press to get these out. This is a job that's easy to do even when the bike's back together, you know, it's just taking the rear wheel off and getting it to a place that can do it. Uh, so as it was working fine before, but we're taking it apart and I know those seals are knackered, we can put the new seals in just for now. Um, or until these bearings need doing, should we say. Seals have got two sides to them as I understand it, and the whole idea is that that goes on the outside. I found that with some gentle persuasion, I've actually been able to get that to go most of the way in by hand. And I need the biggest socket I can find. Well, the largest socket I have isn't quite big enough, so I'm going to use the old seal and a socket which fits inside it. I'm going to do one more job and then we'll call an end to episode 13 because we've actually got a fair amount done. And the next job is uh, for episode 14 is going to be doing the fork seals, you know, taking the forks apart, draining the oil, blah, blah, blah. And to do that, I need a tool, um, which I'm going to quickly make. Mm, I guess about there. They also leave. <laughs> That's not straight. There you go, officially it's my tool. <laughs> and I'll say huge thanks to my subscribers, for the people who remember to like these videos, and again, a massive thank you to my patron supporters and the people that are supporting this build through PayPal. Uh, I am a full-time YouTuber, I am a self-employed person at the moment, so doing this bike build during lockdown, it's, uh, it's tricky, but we're making it through, so thank you for that. Catch you in episode 14, where you'll find out what that tool is, and we'll get on with the forks. Hint. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to see future videos. This channel is made possible by the support of the audience. Please consider joining my Patreon to get early access to videos, questions answered in the monthly Q&A, your name on screen, and some exclusive content, all for as little as a dollar a month. You can also check out the links in the description to my merch and other ways to directly support the channel. Thanks for watching.